with the nap the negative portion, you know. <laughs> strengths and weaknesses. 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 What is up, everybody? Welcome to the DMVR Nuggets Podcast. Let's go. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? Yeah. What are we going to do? Get out of here. Get out of here. They fail. We got a very special show for you guys today. We are two days ahead of NBA Summer League. You guys know my favorite week of the entire year. We're going to be in Vegas. I even got a tan for it. I don't know. Nobody commented on it. But you see this? No. Gorgeous. You don't see this gorgeous tan? No. <laughs> it's it's the lighting. I think it's just the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> That's all it is, man. <laughs> yeah, I get no respect around here. Uh, we're a couple days away, so we brought in some couple, uh, some great guests. But first, I got my co-host today, Harrison Wind. I am absolutely hyped for Summer League. Can't wait. Um especially excited to continue the the uh, Jalen Pickett hype. <laughs> there you go. Usually Summer League is like, you know, a month after the last time we saw the player, two months after we've seen the team play. Yep. We're only a couple weeks. Because Summer League, this is always it. Friday, I'm hyped until about 10 until minutes into the game. And I'm like, game. what was I so hyped about? This is terrible. <laughs> but this year, I'm for real hyped. But we have a special panel for you guys today. Back making this... Third appearance, I think, on my show. Second on the DNVR show. It's right. Tommy Balchettis, a.k.a. Tommy Bracelet. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Good pull, to see you. Pull, pull it closer. Nice closer. Okay, yeah. see, the third time, I'm still I'm still an amateur, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, great to hang with the fellas, man. You know, missing a few guys, but hey, you guys will do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, Tommy. You didn't get the fun ones. You got the, just the business. And then over here, the VP of Basketball Operations for the Denver Nuggets, it's Ben Tenzer. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. First time. Excited to, to break the cherry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you guys, uh, first of all, congratulations, man. I don't know how it feels now, a month later or three weeks later or what have you, but you guys are NBA champion executives. Do you Thank think you. about that? Honestly, Ben, do you think about this? Like, it's I'm a some, champ. I started uh, in 05, 06 as an intern, and this is my, it was my 14th year, so it's it's extremely surreal. Uh, it, it doesn't feel real still, honestly. It's just every morning I wake up and I see that championship hat on my on my dresser, I'm like, wow, we did it. Man, so hold up. Tommy, You're because you were one of the most tenured people in the organization, yeah. but if you go predate him to 2005... Where wow. do you rank? Sparky? So, yeah, I mean, so we started together in our kind of our new roles. I had left to go to law school before. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was here count. four years. Yeah, and then came back. So. <laughs> See how he's fudging <laughs> the numbers here to say since 2005? But yeah, I mean, I saw ben the, is a fantastic the, lawyer, man. The, the, he's he's <laughs> just really good at it. And the, really happy to have the, the 09 Western Conference uh, team, I was there for that. So that kind of that, made me. And I grew up in L.A., so it made me hate the Lakers even more. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was so brutal because, I, I mean, I felt like we really had a chance that yeah. series. I mean, you were around yeah. 09, right? I wasn't covering the team at that time, but I mean, I was a Nuggets team. fan, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's crazy to see it all come to fruition. And, you know, we've talked about it forever. Like, oh, one day if we could win one, it would just be wow. insane. And, right. and here you are. Yeah. What about for you, Tommy? What's the experience been like? Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like, you know, like B said, I mean, we, you know, we kind of, we started like in our respective roles, at least together. Uh, we had, you know, just a f so few people in the front office right now. We kind of started in the, you know, in the beginning. Uh, ben, myself, Lisa Johnson, who's been yeah. there forever, um, yeah. you know, and she's she's awesome. You know, she's been she's she's kind of like, you know, the you know, the Nuggets, the Nuggets, um, like a mascot at this point, you know, from, for, you know, from the front office perspective. Uh, Jim Glibinoff also started with us and Raf, right? Yep. And Herb, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Herb Co Coach there. Herb Livesey. Yeah. So it's Sparky, Bobby Simmons. The, yep. Yep. Those guys. Have been there. There. Sparky there has been there for before, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah he, he goes, goes back like yeah, 35, right. yeah, 40 yeah. years. Lisa's yeah. been there the longest 45. 40, 40, 40, but is she still 40, there? 40, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Still, okay. Right. Yeah. She's, she's still there. President of uh, Basketball Administration. Man. So that is a long time. And it is kind of interesting. Now that you're naming all the names, I mean, because we think about, you know, Tim Conley departed or this or that. But there's still a lot of continuity in the front office. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's 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 been amazing to achieve this type of thing, you know, with the people that we achieved it with. Uh -huh. um, obviously, you know, we had amazing additions on the way, right? Uh, obviously, with you know Cal and all the other guys in the front office, we we kind of you know bolstered our you know the, the core that we had, um, and it's it's been all for the better for sure. Right. One of my big complaints about the NBA schedule is they don't give enough time to actually celebrate the championship. Oh, yeah. Isn't it, <laughs> I no, couldn't agree more. Isn't it kind of crazy how you win the championship and then it's the draft? The draft a was week right after. Later, right after. And then now we're in Summer League and it's almost like we've just glossed over the ultimate goal of all of this. At, at least that was my takeaway, like actually going through it and then you guys winning it. It's like, all right, it happened, and now it's done, and now we just move on to the next thing. I was like, 
What the hell? The weird. <laughs> The weirdest was, um, so the parade happens Thursday. We go to Vegas with the team Thursday night. Right. We're back Friday morning. And Monday of the draft week is like crazy, you know? So all of a sudden it's like, okay, Monday is coming. We need to prepare for the draft. It, it was, I mean, very fast. And then all of a sudden we're yeah. summer league and then Vegas. And then after that, we'll be able to take a deep breath and just kind of like enjoy it. But yeah. until then, it's, it's hard work. You know, there's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. And we had a bunch of draft workouts as well after we went. Right. You know? right. So when you think about it, like, hey, we're kind of there in the gym and doing the work, but we're like, you know, we're a little tired physically, <laughs> you know, and mentally we're in a really good spot. So yeah. <laughs> but great, great problems to have, obviously. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> sure. Um, just, yeah, I want some championship stories, though, because we saw all of the players, you know. I mean, my favorite was AG out in the street. Did you guys see this? Yeah, absolutely. Did, yeah. What did you think? What did you see? This? Is there a part of you that was like, Someone go get him. What's he doing out there? I'll He's still in his uniform. If, if you look at AG, that's a man who can really take care of himself. That's true. That's, true. that's the one thing we can say about AG. But, I mean, you guys named, named him Mr. Nugget, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's the man of the people. You know, he, he absolutely loves uh, being a part of this team and being a part of this city. And it seems like, you know, the city kind of embraced him the same way. Yeah. So I think of all people, it's probably, the, you know, the least of our concerns, AG. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he had a lot of fun and we love him for it. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, what about the front office now? Because we didn't see the you guys. Who... Who cut loose the hardest? Who went the hard- <laughs> Who was the AG of the front office? <laughs> it's funny. I mean, that that first night, it's so... I don't even say it's a blur because we're... Dr- I mean, it was just like... It's just so chaotic and then all of a sudden ends so quick. But uh, <laughs> the energy... Someone with the league told me they had never seen a post-game celebration that crazy, like that much energy in the locker room. And when I heard that midway through the night, I was like, okay, this... There is is a full on party, and I think we had a an event for the families separately, and it all kind of turned into the locker room. And so yeah. I, I, I in the past I don't remember so many guests being in the locker room. Yeah, and that was kind of the energy, and everyone just turned up. You I know? think at one but point th- Ben was handing me Mickle trap after Mickle. I think, I think the answer is Ben, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing answer, but it is right here. Uh, it, was, it was so special for everyone. It was crazy. We got to get like Jared Jeffries and Cal to pick up Ben the way the, <laughs> the, the Yokes brothers, Yokes brothers, brothers like, alone. I mean, yeah. when you employ Jared Jeffries, like you're going to have a good locker room celebration probably. Yeah. He's, he's the best. 100% Jared, Jared the always. Best. Yeah. Do we have, you have video I don't know why you put this one on there. Are we critiquing Tommy's I champagne? S- I sent it spirit? to Kale. Kale, uh, do you have it? What? A video uh, that surfaced from the locker room. Oh, I don't know. Nice. Oh. Oh. Harrison win. <laughs> so, you know, Jokic had an unimpressive champagne spray, but this one here. <laughs> this, one, <laughs> this is a rough performance, oh Tommy. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. I'm, I'm just reliving it right now. He's spraying you right there. I don't remember who that was. I honestly don't remember. Content. That's that's fantastic. 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 I don't know how my phone survived that. I'll night. say this. So, so that's the analytics department. And <laughs> okay. we, go, we go really hard. Analytics yeah. 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 We go the hardest. Yeah. 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 So happy for those guys. We're like, we got we to do this. And then somehow we ended up being sprayed as opposed to us yeah. being, doing the spraying. So. No, it was, it was great. You were shaking it like it was a child, you know, like you don't want to give it too much movement. <laughs> I haven't done this very, too yeah. many times, man, in my life. Yeah. It's just the first time I think that I've ever sprayed champagne uh, on somebody. But I remember when I gave you the beer and I I, uh, I was thinking like how special it is for you guys that have followed the team for so long, how, you know, you have all this national media in there. It's, it's a lot. But mm-hmm. anyone that has been around, I feel like gets to take a part of it and feel like they get to enjoy this for everyone. It's not just your following. You're you're a part of it too. So I feel yeah. like that, that was pretty special. Yeah. No, man, I agree. Like I always tell people I'm not on the team. Of course, I'm not involved with the team. I don't work for the team, but I feel like a huge portion of my life has been dedicated right. <laughs> to covering this team and, and the journey. And so like um, if I like didn't partake in a celebration i feel like there'd be something wrong with me no you know? no honestly you guys you guys have galvanized the entire city of denver in the way that you know um is, is absolutely spectacular i mean you have to take a lot of credit for what you guys have done because i mean you know i don't think of ben you know we've been we've been here for 10 years i mean it seems like the city was a buzz for as as, as i've never seen it like that 100 you know? percent. in the it's, last couple of years i mean you guys have been absolutely crushing it with it so i mean we're super that. thankful that you guys did that and I mean. just seeing the videos of the games here oh yeah. my God. i mean my goodness. we talked about there were stories circulating all over about <laughs> oh this guy wants to pop into the bar and yeah. Yeah. it's like the most 
cool neighborhood type of vibe you could you could ever have. Energy and vibes, man. You guys brought it. And you want, so <laughs> I like it. I mean, I I still credit the, the, the Nuggets, you know, for the, for the city being <laughs> as, a bus. as we do. Too, yeah. <laughs> I do we credit you know credit what? the players. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. no, but I, I we we appreciate that a lot. I mean, we obviously this team is easy to sell, and it's funny that there is not as many people. 10 years ago, especially not as many people invested in selling the team and understandably so during lulls or this or that. But it's like somebody told me that watching the show for the first time during the playoff run, they were like, it's like seeing these people that all know a secret that's starting to get out and yeah. they're all just like excited. And that's what <laughs> so it was. Cool. That's yeah. what the show was. That was our vibe is like. That's what we were saying. Like, look, this is yeah, what the yeah, team's yeah. going to do. They're going to beat them in five. They're Feeling gonna totally validated. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so it was a lot of fun. And I imagine for you guys, it had to be the same. I, I'm putting you on the spot here because I'm asking you to answer for somebody else. And Jokic is such a character. My theory, and you can tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. I you're, think you're wrong. <laughs> there's an aspect of his personality that he's, you know, oh, I don't. there's a parade. I just want to go home that I think is very real. But in my opinion, is a little hammed up. I think these things probably mean a lot more to him than what he shows. Do you how? But I, at the same time, he's also being serious. He does want to go home and get to his <laughs> sure, horses. Sure, sure. I mean, wh how do you guys read his whole <laughs> shtick <laughs> versus what you know? Where's the truth and where's the separation from all that? You know, I think I think with Nicola, especially, he is he most certainly is a basketball junkie. He absolutely loves the sport. You know, there's always you know there's always a little bit of a narrative like, hey, does he actually love it? Right. He absolutely loves it. He played it in his entire life. Um, and he's the best basketball player of all time. I think what he does really well is to kind of, you know, he minimizes the uh, kind of the, the what grandiosity of it all. Mm, um, I right, think that's yep. probably what he does because he wants to make sure that, you know, every he, he himself stays humble and stays uh, grounded. Um, and that kind of trickles down to his teammates as well. I think he does a really good job doing that. But if you, you, if you catch him one on one and everything, I mean, he's so knowledgeable about basketball. Uh, we had a really funny situation one time. So Drew Nicholas joined our staff last year. Um, and he's a very famous EuroLeague player. You know, he was you know two-time EuroLeague champ. Um, and we were in the in, in San Diego for training camp. And me and Drew were just kind of talking about something. And then Nicola came over, you know, talked. And then Drew kind of walked away. And Nicola was like, "Was that Drew Nicholas?" <laughs> like, oh. You know what I mean? Like he, that's cool. He he, he knows Drew. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's obviously grew up watching and everything. Yeah. So like he is a huge basketball junkie. Uh, but he does try to kind of tamper down a little bit just because of who he is. I think it's just a product of how selfless he is, really, and how it's kind of like a self-deprecating type of humor. And, oh, it's, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But he said it at the parade, you know, like, I can't remember the line. I want to stay, yeah. stay at parade. No, stay I want to stay on parade. Stay yeah, 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 yeah. There's an F-bomb. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, it's just, it's he loves it. I, I think he does. I think it's just a product of how he doesn't like attention. He likes to give it to everyone. I mean, his line, at, and I rewatched the fourth quarter a couple nights ago of the, of the winning game. And he's like, okay, now we can go home. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's very simple. Like he yeah. wants everyone to be able to celebrate. And I mean, special type of guy, really. I yeah. mean, we all know that, but it really is to see it come to fruition, him win, and then still be exactly the same. Yep. Unbelievable. Just to kind of see really zero, zero ego. And he's <laughs> celebrating in Serbia. You guys have probably yeah. seen some yeah. 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 That, oh, yeah. That's how much it means to him. You, know? you can, you can yeah. tell. I almost feel bad <laughs> for him. And I know he knows how to manage it, but I almost feel bad for him because he does appear to be beyond the threshold of fame, even in Sambor now. You know, there's a threshold. There's and a it's threshold. almost like he's <laughs> everywhere. There's like almost He people. just showed up to the track and he's like, what are all yeah. these people doing? Yeah. 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 At least we went when he wasn't there. No race, you know. <laughs> he, he told me when he's in Sambor, like, like it's you know right away everyone will and then it becomes pretty chill like quickly because yeah, yeah. they're used to it and it's he's kind of comfortable at that point just kind of walking around but i asked him the same thing like what is it going to be like when you get home and it's like yeah you know a couple days will be crazy and then it'll be it'll be fine and the way i mean it's weird to talk about the media as a monolith but the media when we talk about nba national media it keeps getting whittled down more and more and more in that I don't want to just say that they're lazy because that's that seems like too harsh, but that they don't in it's almost impossible for them to fully invest in the type of stories this or that, and so I think they rely so much on give me something, mm. and when he gives you oh I can go home now it's like okay narrative is he hates basketball yeah. just wants to go yeah, home he doesn't yeah. love any of this and that's what we're gonna run with and I just. I, I saw some people were, how would you feel if you were a fan? And he says he doesn't even want to celebrate with you. I was like, guys, come <laughs> on. reading into it too yeah, much. Yeah, you're reading yeah. into this too much. <laughs> yeah, like, you got to yeah. dig a little bit harder before you make those kind of takes. Um, let's take a break. On the other side, I want to get a little bit more into what you guys, you know, just talk to Ben in particular and just kind of talk about uh, a little bit more about your job. But then we want to get into the draft. We want to talk about these new guys, including Jalen Pickett, who... 
Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy is indeed. Oh boy. I'll sub out for that segment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In fact, I'll ISO for that segment. If Go that's ahead. Yeah, that's uh, what you've been doing all let week. Him cook, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, Ibotta. Uh, you know about a Ibotta by now. They give you cash back on all things that you already buy, like groceries, online purchases, and more. Um, but Ibotta sponsored our final. Nugget Spotlight When's of that the premiere? season. It premieres at 345. 3.45 directly after this show on YouTube. Ryan Green, I think, is putting the finishing touches on it right now. Um, so finish watching this show then. Stay on our YouTube channel. It's premiering 345. But, it's an um, hour-long vlog. And I'm telling you, Game 5, the Game 5 chapter of it, brings you right back. Yeah, It is so well It's an edited. hour of just like his best stuff ever. So... Uh, make sure to tune into that. Ryan's worked really hard on that. Uh, that's premiering again, 345 right after this show. Also, Bet365. Bet365, they pioneered live in-game betting. Today, Bet365 offers the widest range of games and markets available for live in-game betting. Uh, Bet365 has 80 million users worldwide. Uh, they live stream 780,000 uh, events each year proud partner the Colorado Rockies they've also got these boosts every single day based on the market that you're in so for the Nuggets they've got boosts going on right now for championship odds for next season you can bet summerly they got everything on bet365 a uh, turn one dollar into two hundred dollars of bonus bets when you join bet365 download the app deposit ten dollars claim your two hundred dollars in bonus bets as soon as you place a bet for one dollar download the bet365 app use code dnvr 365 when you sign up must be 21 plus and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1 800 Gambler. All right, back here, segment two. We are with Denver Nuggets assistant GM Tommy Balchettis and, of course, VP of basketball operations Ben Tenzer. Tommy, you've been on, you've talked about your job a little bit before, but Ben, just as we're introducing you to everybody, you know, how would you describe what you do in the Nuggets front office? What's your role? I, I I think the best way to do it is kind of like a jack of all trades type role. I'm a lawyer, so um, all the contracts, all the immigration, all the kind of legal issues uh, come under my umbrella. Is that part co complicated? The immigration? Uh, I didn't even think of yeah, that. Yeah, it's funny. It get now I'm used to it, but, yeah. but we've had a lot of foreign players, yeah. and so it gets a little tricky with visas. Some guys need visas to go to Canada. Mm. Um, some players need new visas every year got me here so yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so, so um <laughs> yeah just it's, it's still going somehow <laughs> <laughs> yeah the green card yeah just kind of the behind the scenes stuff with with that um all the contracts and a variety of legal issues that come up i don't do the business side of the legal stuff we have a few other lawyers that do that so that's like the trademark and all those season desist we saying you guys i'm <laughs> just kidding no no um and then i i was like i kind of got credited for getting our geely team or being involved with getting that up and going so i've always been involved in the kind of the management of that but really just whatever you know it was uh i worked for before it was like Masai was here, I worked for him and worked for the prior Jim Workentine and Mark Mark, uh, Mark Workentine, Rex Chapman, Brett Barrup. Um, Kiki was the one that hired me before then. So uh, just whatever the GM wants me to help with, I feel like I, I'm a part of helping them do their jobs. So. You, so you started as an intern in 20, How 2005. How old were you? I was uh, 20 when I started. Jesus. Yeah, 2005. Like yeah. a summer internship? It was, uh, it was right when the season started. It was my okay. junior year. So it was 05, 06. So I, like Vashawn Leonard, Marcus Camby, Ken yeah. Martin, Nene, Melo, obviously. Um, so it was there four seasons starting then. I got, Did Vashawn, Vashawn tear his Achilles on the ga first game or something that I think that, that year? was that first year. Yeah, yeah that okay. was my first yeah. year. Um, and, uh, yeah, just the at the time, the minor league team was in Broomfield, and I was yeah. going to school in Boulder, so I would go to those games and learn how to scout the minor leagues. It was mm. the D-League at the time. Um, and then we would even have um, – Fourteeners, the Fourteeners, exactly. Out. So sometimes we would do uh, PJ minor Tucker's league <laughs> first team. Yeah, actually, yeah. Lou Amundsen. I mean, there were there some good. There yeah, Vaughn Wafer grew up right there. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so just uh, we would we would organize workouts sometimes for the minor league guys when they would be in town. Um, so just kind of started learning how to scout through the minors. Uh, I do college now, and you know, a variety of other things, but. 
Yeah, You're just a worker, trying. I can tell. Like, uh, you know, you start as an intern oh, we, and we, then we, you're we, scouting. We'd be, lost, <laughs> we'd be lost without Ben, I'm telling uh, you, man. My God, I mean, he, he does so many things. I mean, we'd be completely in a different but, spot if Ben was not here. Well, That's what they say about me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank what, you. But what were you interning for? Like, I, I was just doing uh, general front office stuff. So I, okay. I, I was a huge fan of Moneyball growing up. I yeah. love the, the A's yeah. randomly. I loved the Oakland as a baseball team. So I... I, I love that story. And so I was always kind of analytics is not my thing and it's his thing. Um, but I was always kind of interested in that right. understanding value and trying to get good value. Um, and so kind of the money ball model was how I really got interested in the cap. And the cap was something I was passionate about early on. And then I went to law school to kind of learn it at a higher level. Um, but yeah, really just whatever they needed to do, you know, like drive the van, pick up the summer league guys and to take them to eat and really you know, every, i mean everything really and I, I worked for an agency before then so i would drive the players around during pre-draft so i was kind of comfortable mm -hmm. with the pre-draft stuff and then i worked summer league uh that's actually how i got in with the nuggets an issue was through warren at the summer league so i were i were intern for the summer league for i think nine years in a row so wow. it's just grinding you know yeah. all day stats and i mean any that's why i say jack of all trades i mean whatever you know, needs to get done, you, you help with. And, and then so. the door opens up and you have all these life experiences to pull from and <laughs> you now just, you're an NBA champion. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just <laughs> stick around with this guy and keep yeah. fighting and plugging away. And I'm guessing you've growing. read the entire CBA yeah. by now. Yeah. 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 Did it, yeah. Did yeah. But like yeah. actually have you? No, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to say I read the entire thing, but I've, I've skimmed through a lot of it. And gotcha. They sent a, a red line version, so it's easier to see the changes. Oh, that's it's handy. It's yeah, a lot that's, better. That's and the league nice is there to help you. I mean, obviously it's intense, but... You're we're constantly on the phone with them, calling about everything to mm -hmm. just kind of go through these scenarios. And even when you read it, it's sometimes complicated. So you actually have to call and say, "Can you give me an example?" I mean, it's brand new. Right. So right. you know, for them, they're working through these unintended consequences. People always talk about. <laughs> of course. It's like one of those <laughs> fire words, you know. But you don't know in three years. Oh, this scenario, and yeah. now that's going to change free agency with this guy. I, my <laughs> theory. You don't have to comment on this. I don't want to get you guys in trouble. <laughs> my theory is the unintended. You said three years because. In previous iterations, I do feel like there's the GMs that just get in there and think, how do we find the loophole? Where's the loophole here or there? I kind of feel like teams are faster at that. Three years might be the long way. We might have people that found the loophole of this yeah. whole thing by February, and we're like, oh, crap. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think that sometimes you, it just takes time to have scenarios play yeah, out that mm -hmm. are uh, like the Arenas rule is a good example of a, a big rule in the CBA, but it only happened in, when – that situation right, right. arose and then they created a rule from it. Um, so those kinds of things, you know, those are like those CBA. Have you ever called the league for the question and they're like, well, we don't know either, man. <laughs> they never say we'll, that. We'll, we'll get back, we'll get back, to, you. back to you. They definitely say we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh my That's God, oh my God, guys, oh my God, oh my God. No, idea yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no I mean, for them, there's a group of them and they're all very Shit, sharp. it's and Tenzer they, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they do a great job, but every person in our, in our role our job is to push the boundaries and, and yeah. that's their job is to figure out yeah. where the boundaries are. So they, they yeah. do a great job and they, they have a thankless job, you know, just p picking up the call every single time. And so we appreciate how, how hard they work on it too. Well, let's get into the draft this year. Um, start getting into the team here. So first of all, one of the things I've heard from, you know, I talked to every, everybody, I get to get a different opinion is these were the three guys that we identified. And it's the second year in a row that it's been like, Hey, we had two guys last year, three guys this year. And, they were all available. Now, some of that is if you look at the mocks, these guys were all projected a little bit behind, but that seems to be an MO of, you know, the the Calvin Booth era is that don't care where these guys are mocked. We got our guys and we're going for them. When did you I'll ask you, Tommy, when did you when did you guys identify these guys? Like when when was it that you guys knew this was the target? I'll tell you this. I mean, you know, we're all beneficiaries of like of Cal's basketball feel. Like really, I mean, you know, that guy is, I think. In my opinion, I mean, I've been around basketball for a little while now, not just NBA basketball, obviously growing up. Um, he's got the best basketball feel of all people I've ever been around. Um, you know, he kind of, he identifies a certain type of player. And it's actually amazing. It's almost, it's crazy to see like how early he sees those players. And those players may not be even on, on any mocks and, you know, not being talked about. All of a sudden, all of a sudden towards the end of the year, those guys are like top 10 or something or like top seven. Like, how did you see that, you know? So, I mean, that's one thing about Cal that, I mean, I, I, I have admired and, you know, both of us and we will continue admiring because he is unbelievable at kind of spotting talent and understanding. And again, we've talked about this many times. A lot of it comes from the fact that he played basketball at the highest of levels, um, you know, but I think that's not giving him enough credit because as an executive, you know, he's doing 
I think even a better job than you know when he was as a ten-year veteran. When you think about it, I mean, you know, the guy is just really good at spotting talent. And it, you know, uh, when you kind of when he mentions a player, you kind of you listen a little more closely. Then you know, you go check him out and you kind of start seeing some things. Um, you know, I think most of us in you know in in the front office, when he identified some of those guys, were like, oh, you know, I hadn't thought of you know so and so. All of a sudden, you watch him, you're like, oh my god, he's right. You know, um, you know, with these guys. Um, some of it, you know, with some of these guys, it was it was the case. With the other ones, you're like, okay, that guy is clearly pretty good. Um, I think with Cal's philosophy, like as you said, looking at mocks, uh, mocks are kind of crazy because you can just call one of the mocks guys and tell him you like somebody, <laughs> and that guy will be on the mocks the next day. <laughs> right, right. We are the ones who are informing the mocks when you think right, about yeah. it, right? So um, I think you know, li- you know, watching those mocks and really you know seeing who's on there, it's not always the best strategy. And I think Cal was. If not the earliest guy thinking that, I mean, he's one of the earliest ones. Um, he sees a player, he likes a player, he understands the fit, and we will go towards that player. I mean, it, it seems like that's kind of what we've been doing, and it's been uh, so far so good, and hopefully it'll continue being that way. And Ben, like how, you know, contrasting since you've been through a couple different um, iterations of the front office, now we're in a full one full calendar year basically uh, with Calvin Booth. What what would you say are the, some of the defining traits now? Yeah, it's... It's fascinating because, kind of to his point, he has this remarkable vision of seeing a guy and how it will translate to the NBA. And that's, like, impossible for everyone to do. It's, it's just a hard thing to do in general at the highest level. And he has this unique ability to do it. And last year with Christian and Peyton, it was our first go-around. And I remember at the Combine talking to him about Christian, and he was, like, you know, really excited about him. I'm like, well, you know, the... The measurements came out and his wingspan, you know, that's one oh, of those yeah. things. The negative wingspan. And, he, and it oh. didn't, I remember. We, we were really hung <laughs> up on that. Uh, I had, had, to, had to cancel <laughs> all that. Yeah. Well, it's Man, like, that you don't know how important it is, but it's something to yeah. bring up, right? Because there's, and he, he was like, yeah, that's that's no problem. He's, yeah. you know, he's, it, don't, it won't matter for him. Like he was able to come quickly, just change the way he thought about, it. okay, his wingspan, he's a two. He's, he's going to be a good two. You know, it's fine. He's, mm-hmm. He may not guard threes as much as, as what we thought, but he's going to be really good at this. And, um, you know, you saw it, it was the best example ever. You know, we win the championship. Christian is, you know, a big part of it. And, uh, and so like we couldn't have a better experience of seeing in one year, the vision turn to reality. And it allowed us, I think this draft to feel even better about these guys. And like Pickett, I remember he brought up really early on Mm -hmm. and, you know, you start watching him and, uh, you know, people have their the, the negatives on him from other teams where, oh, can, can he fit? Can he translate his age, uh, his style of play? And, uh, you know, we, we're seeing a lot now of how good he's been. And it's like, yeah, that none of those weaknesses or potential problems are, are a problem. And Cal felt very strongly that they wouldn't be. And yeah. just right yeah. there, it's easy to see it. It's no lot. It's it's no secret that I'm huge on on Jalen Pickett. I think I might be higher on him than anybody since Yoke. That's not <laughs> to say I think he's better. I'm just saying I'm personally mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. you know, like excited. Um, and I kept trying to think, like for the last week after since I've been watching him, and I feel that this way where I'm like I love this dude. I keep thinking, what is it about Cal that likes this guy? And here's my theory: I've landed on Cal wasn't a star. He was a role player. When you're a role player, you do many thinkless things, right? Because it's like the other guy made the shot, but I did mm. the screen and then cut through and dragged the guy. And <laughs> and I so my theory is, I wonder if he recognizes more of these things. Because to me, pick it, it's like Jamal. Jamal's a great screener. Nobody ever talks about that as mm. one of his ul- ultimate skills. Guys that do things that they're not the thing you talk about, but they're so valuable. And I just feel like Pickett, when I'm watching him, he does a lot of those. A lot of just little like, oh, he cut really hard on that one, or he did something off ball. And I just wonder if he's like, yeah, that's the stuff. Nobody, you know, yeah, values that more. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I think you know, the like Calvin sees all those things. To your point, um, you know, it's not just about you know the productivity that you see in, in the box score. Of course, I mean, it's it's, it's almost like a, a too basic of a thing to say. Um, I think when Cal watched you know Pickett play. It's like, all right, man, you know, that dude bends the game to his will. I think those were kind of like, you know, the, the phrase that we used, you know, quite a mm. bit, and that came from Cal. I mean, that's what, he, that's what he does. I mean, he controls the game so well. And as Ben said, I mean, you know, you're seeing some of the, you know, maybe it's either social media posts or, you know, some experts talking, can he translate that to the game? I mean, Cal was one of the first ones, at least, you know, in my, in my, in my knowledge, to say like, hey, in the NBA, you do what you did in college only at a higher level. Uh, we've already seen it in our gym, him putting guys in the, you know, in the basket. 
Um, booty ball, you can say it. Booty ball. Uh, I've never heard that term. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Harrison. <laughs> we're, I'm telling you, we're making it. We're yeah. making it. I'm next Everybody's year, saying yeah. Michael Malone. Next year never say never heard that term. That's, yeah. offen- that's offensive. That's offensive. You cannot <laughs> use that. You cannot use that term. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the no, best, man. It's, 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 it's so amazing. Good. I mean, he is, he is, he is using his body. Well, you know, first so of all, well. hold up. I got to interrupt you. Do you know his nickname? Do you know Jalen Pickett, Pickett has a nickname? What's his that nickname? That he prefers. You don't know it? Do you guys know yeah, it? We know it. I we think know so, it. Yeah. You know it? Yeah. Grandpa. Grandpa. Well, Grandpa, yes, there's another one. That's not the one. That's a name that was given to him. Same with Booty Ball and style play. <laughs> not things he chose for himself. He has a nickname, though. You don't know it? What is it? I get to debut it to Nuggets Nation. Whoop. Whoop. I didn't his know nickname that. is I know Whoop. Yeah. I don't know if it'll I stick. Know that. I don't know. But, uh, and, <laughs> and there's a sign for it. You can zoom in here. Whoop. <laughs> and the Penn State crowd would do w? this one for right. him. Like, he did a three. I can see it. So okay. they'd do a whoop. <laughs> I'm so yeah. That's big. I'm you got to bring that up in some way. He's going to have the, the picket <laughs> fan <laughs> section in some I'm like, what's everybody doing? Why is everybody doing <laughs> this? Do you need a jersey? That is awesome. Are you going to wear it in, just, in Vegas I'm or no? I'm just saying, man. I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> I like to be uh, now, listen, prepared. It's a fantastic snipe for Cal. I mean, you know, honestly, you know, Penn's, everybody kind of made the, con- the Penn State connection. Right. But, I mean, he could have played a cop in State. Cal would have done the same thing. I mean, it's just, just you know. Shout out Coppin State. I don't know why I use them. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna be a smaller school. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it's sorry. I, I was just saying no, real quick. Like it. we're we're like giddy. What I was just telling Ty, Cal yesterday. Like I'm giddy watching him in the gym because you told me this how he was gonna translate. I believed you, and now we're seeing it. Yeah. It's surreal. Yeah. It was just in November whenever we were talking about it. It was like yeah. now we he's watched in our a gym. little of the scrimmage today at practice, and like my t- first takeaway from watching him was like, oh, he's in control of the game. Like, if he's like dribbling the ball up the floor, if he's in another part of the offense, like, he is controlling the game, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. Like, that that was my first takeaway watching him today. And it's, you know, it's funny. It's it's great to have such smart players. I mean, obviously, Colin Gillespie, right? I mean, one of the smartest, you know, guards in college coming out. Bob Cousy Award winner. I mean, we have Colin, we have Jalen, we have, you know, some of these other guys who are su- super smart. It just feels like right now that the gym is full of guys who know how to play. Right. That's not always the case for summer league teams. Um, but I think, you know, maybe because we've, we're drafting just a little older or just a little more experienced, all of a sudden that gym is very, very different. Payton Watson helps a lot. I mean, yeah. it's just like the chip on his shoulder. It's, we yeah. joke about it, I mean, early in the early part about being excited for summer league, but I really am in large part because it's less about the goodness of a player for me. It's are they interesting. I just think there's a lot of guys that are interesting yeah. in large part because I find – High IQ basketball, interest more interesting. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Um, you were talking though about Pickett's doing so many of the things that Cal and the staff identified early on. What are those things that you're seeing from him, Ben? I mean, the passing to me is the biggest thing. Clearly, um, he uses his body when when people thought that he may not be athletic enough to like contribute in the <laughs> NBA at that level. He does exactly what he did in college right. at, in the NBA, or at least at summer league. And uh, the passing and the shooting has have both been uh, not even a surprise. Just uh, they're they're very. He's very good at those things. Tom, <laughs> Tommy, I've texted you this. I know it's a, um, it's a crazy take, and I'm taking heat for it. But isn't that a Jokic trait? It is. Does it, don't people say like in the Adriatic League, he just kind of walks into a spot. But when he plays against athletes, you're not gonna do that. Hey, he's just walking then, into a spot then against then athletes. Doesn't. Now then he does it. I mean, I, I think you now a mark of a really good player is just how malleable he is and how how much they can adjust. Um, is Jalen going to bully all these dudes into the rim on the NBA level? Maybe, maybe not. But you know what? He'll find ways to be extremely effective in other ways. I mean, I've seen him. When I, yeah, I was there for the Big Ten tournament. I mean, they played Indiana. I mean, they threw two or three defenders at him. It didn't matter. You know, yeah. he found ways to get uh, everybody else involved. He got Jace. What's that guy? What is it? Jace. Jace. Trey Jackson Davis? Trey, Trey, yeah, Trey Jackson Davis. He scored on him inside and then went to him and did this one. <laughs> they ended up having a call timeout, I think, just to that's say just, thing. That's just as a swag that Jalen plays with. Right? <laughs> literally walked all the way back down yeah. the court doing this one. I thought, yeah, that's did. an NBA prospect that's known for his strength. And he just 100%. littled him. Yeah. Um, yes. But I, I, I really like it. So... Any other thing you want to say that you've observed just from watching him over the last week or something? And just Jalen or, or the uh, other guys? Just for well? Jalen. We're just going to go one by well, one. I mean, here. honestly, I mean, he's everything that's been advertised. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's smart. He's mature. Um, you know, he is strong. And, you know, he's a big guard that I think the NBA these days can really, really use. I mean, you know, we love size on our team. Uh, just in general, size is something that we, we really focus on for our team. Um, I think, you know, in the playoffs, we were one of the bigger teams out there. I think if not the biggest one, every yep. time we played somebody. I mean, I he's 6'2". 
He's uh, listen. I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe he's six two. I don't know if it's six two. But yeah. I, it seems like he's a little north of that. However, <laughs> that six two is so strong yeah. and so big and thick and strong. I mean, it's you know that six two all of a sudden feels like a six yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. We should Defend ask the, position, we should ask some yeah. of our assistant coaches how they felt when you when you put them in the. Really, in the, <laughs> I'm not. They have to guard them, and they're like, "Hey, man, we can't." Like, oh, come on, man. But yeah. I think the the confidence too is something yeah. that you just quickly see how he's just ready. Not afraid of it at all, and that's probably half of it. Right, for sure. For sure. Right. Um, all right, let's hit another break. On the other side, Julian Strother, Hunter Tyson. Get into those guys. Ivy Nutrition of Wash Park. Check these guys out. Uh, they are located in Wash Park, corner of Alameda and Downing. Anybody who mentions DN- DNVR when they come into that location gets 50% off their first IV nutritional drip. Give them a call, 720-259-4404 for more information. Uh, they do intermuscular injections as well with vitamin formulas. They have an express lunch break drip, hydration drips. They got everything. We've all been there. They took great care of us, super professional. Uh, so if you want an IV drip, check out IV Nutrition at Wash Park, corner of Alameda and Downing. Just mention DNVR, get 50% off your first IV nutritional drip. Also make sure to check out Illegal Pete's. They've got the longest happy hour around this episode of the DMVR Nuggets podcast brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Uh, they got happy hour from 3 to 8 p.m. every single day at all 12 Illegal Pete's locations. Um, also, you can wear Nuggets gear and get a house mark or draft beer for free with the purchase of an adult entree. Again, 3 to 8 p.m. happy hour every single day. That's at all 12 Illegal Pete's locations. Stop by after work, enjoy an extra mark at the patio at happy hour price from 3 to 8 p.m. every single day. So before we get into those other guys, Jamal Murray made a surprise appearance this week. Did you guys know about it? What do you What do you make of this? Like, did you know he was did in you? town? I didn't know. That's, that's a good question. No. <laughs> he shows up in his Lambo. He, and it's just, yeah, he, just, he, he just, just loves man. He just loves it, man. He's addicted to, to basketball. Yeah. Man. Yeah. He can't get enough. Yeah, he's been in town. I'm not sure like what his summer plans <laughs> are, but he's been in town and was was working out that day. So yeah, just right. loves hoops, man. <laughs> just loves hoops, and for the young guys, it's really cool to just hang it's with. Like that's Jamal Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. single one of them, that was like the first thing they said. It was like, yeah, man, he was in the gym. I was guarding him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it's like a big deal. So yeah. so cool. It I is, think it's cool. I think it's really cool. All right, let's get to Julian Strother, guy that was taken with the the first pick. Um, you know, give me give me kind of what was what did you guys see from him? When did you identify him, and, and, and why are you confident in him? One of the biggest things about him, um, obviously, it's it's probably the biggest thing. It's how easy it is for him to take NBA three-point shots yeah. and make so many of them. It's so obviously incredibly important, right, in today's game. I mean, it, first of all, 6'7", second of all, can rebound. Third of all, not just a shooter, can actually get to the paint, get that floater up, you know, actually get, you know, and finish, finish in a, on, a, you know, in a, on a high level. Um, but it is incredible how much he can stretch the floor out um, the, the way he shoots it. Um, you know, some people have kind of quibbled with, you know, is his shot release a little too low? It doesn't matter if he's shooting from 40 feet. Um, <laughs> and he's been doing that in the gym, and it's, it's, it's really amazing to see that. Um, you know, we, we had an amazing three-point shooting team this year, but we, don't, we didn't necessarily always take as many threes as we, as we probably should, right? I mean, with, with the... With the level of shooters that we have, I mean, we ended up winning the championship, so you can't really say anything. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, if we have amazing shooters, I think our coaches will also agree that you know sometimes we can generate just a few more, um, and somebody like that can really, really help that. Um, I forget exactly how many three-point attempts he averaged in college, but I mean, my God, when he shoots it, you're like, oh, that thing's going in for sure. Um, yeah, they're like know. no doubters. Yeah, yeah. Ben, you know who he kind of reminds me of is Tommy Balchettis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's no shot he yeah. doesn't he doesn't <laughs> have a great life for. <laughs> you ever play with Tommy? That guy will get him yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's so that's why I like him so much. Right? <laughs> the, yeah, it's yeah, like, I like this guy. Julian is the Tommy Balchettis <laughs> of. <laughs> oh, this is actually the <laughs> highest compliment I've ever seen <laughs> yeah. in my life. So yeah. Thank you both. But, for that. but in all sincerity, though, like honestly, having a quick trigger is hard, man. And not to go back on another draft pick. Of, of your guys's, but Tyler Light in years back, an unbelievable shooter. But I remember my lasting memory of him, especially at summer league, was pull the trigger, man, pull yeah, the trigger. Right. Strother, I have a feeling you're not going to have a hard time telling him that. No, I mean the confidence is there. I mean, big program. I was going to say professionalism, character mm. uh, is uh, is high on that list too. But positional size as well. But he's ready to come in and just do what he does. 
and he should be able to do it at a high level. So, yeah, yeah I, it's awesome. It's fun watching him. He seems like a fun personality, too. Obviously, you guys know the, the night he's drafted, he's posting pictures of Michael Malone in the <laughs> yeah, chain. Yeah, and yeah. The Nuggets Great personality. Always smiling on his face. I mean, he's, he's awesome. Great. Yeah. And he's from Vegas, so he should have uh, right, quite you know. a big presence at, uh, with his family and, and his friends at, at those games. So what cool. do you want to see from him in Summer League? I mean, it's like the first analysis. What, what do you hope to see? Uh, you know, just honestly, just, uh, you know, how he fits in, you know, it's actually, he's, he's going to easily fit in. He already fits in, you know, with the way we play and, you know, the way, what we're trying to do with our summer league team. I think it's, uh, you know, how how much other stuff he can do offensively. That's actually, to me, I think particularly is interesting because we all know he can shoot. I mean, you know, point, yeah. if somebody's going to really attack him hard because they're going to be NBA <laughs> athletes on the floor, Maybe he'll take those two dribbles, get to the, you know, again, get to the rim, get to that floater range. I haven't um, seen somebody with a floater like him yeah. coming out of college in a while. I'm very man. excited to see that, you know, because you know, college floater. is different. Yeah, college is different than the NBA, and there's going to be the scouting report going to be on him pretty early. Hey, yeah. man, don't. But here's the thing. I mean, and we talked about this, and, you know, with Cal and everybody, if you're closing out on him, it's probably too late with how quickly he shoots. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to kind of ride his hip all the time if you want to make sure you know he doesn't take, you know get a shot off. And he's, if he's able to kind of beat you off the dribble, I'm not sure what you really can do to stop this kid from from scoring. I asked JB, Coach John Beckett, who's coaching the summer league and one of the assistant coaches, about him. What's what's not on the scouting report? And he said basketball IQ. He said that's the thing that you know when a shooter knew this or that, but he really just has a great IQ and just picks everything up kind of quickly. Yeah. Knows where to be. I mean, I would. I was going to say defense as well. Just mm -hmm. seeing how he can hang and really just defend his position. But he should be able to switch on other guys, especially with the summer league squads that we're playing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's going to a big program like that. He's he's going to be experienced. He's he's been well coached, and he should be able to come in day one and be be a great pro. I hope he gets catches <laughs> catches fire here because I think he is a bit of a I don't want to say a streaky shooter but he gets hot man because again his confidence starts here mm -hmm. but when he starts mm -hmm. making them he, he caught goes here. fire today in oh, the yeah. scrimmage oh yeah. oh yeah three for three he hit three big triples one. big ones too because yeah. they were they were down and they ended up winning it yeah like clutch and ones too yeah I mean the portion that we saw he went three or three and they were all like like I said no doubters far, from far away too. yeah deep it's it's, it's oh right up. beyond the line even oh, oh yeah, yeah. I love yeah. this yeah. it's like Bones was this way where Bones' numbers as a three-point shooter were good but Bones like when he hit two in a row you're like all right he's gonna hit six in a row now <laughs> and like I feel like Strother right. might have a little bit of that to him too For where sure. it's like oh he's just in yeah. that in in that zone um, and then even yesterday, talking to Pickett, he was talking about how he and Strother have been talking a lot to get to know each other's game, which I think is kind of cool. Just oh, like, yeah. hey, like, here's a little action when I do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, what about Hunter Tyson? Let me just go ahead and start for Tommy. What's, what's, sure. what's the scouting report on him? Oh, well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, with Hunter, he is, you know, he is a big wing um, who can really rebound the ball, who can really shoot the ball. And how hard he plays, he's probably one of the hardest playing guys in the gym right now, if not the hardest, uh, which, which we absolutely love. I mean, we've been kind of like on this thing for the last, you know, three, four, five years. You know, we love motor. We love activity. You know, if somebody is kind of passive, they can be very talented. They're still not going to be impactful. Uh, with Hunter, he plays so hard. He had maybe like five offensive boards today or something like that, something crazy. Um, you know, I, I think with him is, you know, he's so, he's so polished. You know, he's obviously been in college for a little while. Um, he's out there fitting in perfectly, um, and he's he's one of those guys where you know he's he's going to be a wing in the NBA, um, and you know wings are so valuable all the time. And I think he has so many different skill sets uh, with his shooting, with his rebounding, with with how hard he plays that he's going to be able to fit into any type of way we wanted to play. So he's just a perfect perfect addition in that regard. But why? What was the thing about him? So like we can identify with Pickett the age and the size and will it translate? What was the thing with him that maybe? The mocks and everybody else might sure. have been so low on. It's just always, you know, a guy like that tends to be kind of, you know, undervalued, it seems like. You mm -hmm. know? I think age is a lot with him, too. Yeah. yeah. Five years at Clemson. Five years. And, you know, a guy like that, he'd be like, it's like he just kind of falls through, ends up being, you know, maybe undrafted. Somebody picks him, picks him up on a two way. Before you know it, you're like, he's the first, you know, it's the first guy who's all of a sudden on a roster. And you're like, how do we miss on that guy? Yeah. It happens all the time. So let's just not miss on those guys. Let's actually go and get them, right? Um, there's not a whole lot you don't like about his game. Is I'm there, predicting that he looks great in Summer League sure. because he plays hard. He has a crazy motor. 
Like he's super coachable. He can fit into any like type of lineup, any type of role, and he can shoot it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Like I, I just feel like shooting, he's gonna pop at summer league. Shooting is the thing that like in summer league, if you can shoot it and you make some threes, everyone's gonna. I mean, Christian Brown last year I thought was good, except for didn't make any shots, and everyone's like he's terrible. <laughs> it's like guys, he just missed shots. Everything else is yes. fine. So yes. if you just make shots and you're terrible at everything else, people will be like, he's great, man. Yeah, yeah. And twelve I, points. Yeah. I think three. for Hunter too, some teams probably question if he's a wing or not. I mm-hmm. think maybe he's undersized four. Um, and I think like us looking at him as great size for a wing helped helped the the category a lot. Well, yeah. let point. me let me ask about this one. Is it? It sounds like you're saying it's almost a market inefficiency that everyone wants to go 19, 18, 19, 18, 19, 18, 19. And when you look at a 22 year old, 23 year old, you're like. Look, man, this guy's probably not going to be here eight years anyway. Yeah, so, like, yeah. what, are we, what are we doing? He can play. Right, CB is one of you know, Cal. You know, one of the one of the first ones again to say like, hey, you know, all of a sudden you see the drafts kind of go a certain way, and then you know, I think the most interesting way to, to to look at a draft is who went undrafted and you know who actually ended up doing well, and then you realize like, mm. why not just go for those guys in the draft, right? That's the draft is such a it's such a place where, as you said, you know, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, maybe it's not even an age, maybe it's a certain profile that tends to be drafted, and all of a sudden those guys end up not making it. You know, you, you fall in love with the talent, maybe right. the way, you know, somebody looks, but that's not always the guys who end up making it in the league, you know? If you do have motor and ability to shoot and you have size, you'll probably make it. Um, and then if those guys go undrafted sometimes, you're like, you know, why did, you know, X player X go undrafted? So it is an inefficiency. We're trying to correct it. And I think Cal started doing that last year a little bit, and you know, especially this year. And I mean, we personally believe that quite a bit. And you think there's only you know five guys I think second round undrafted that make it, or some tiny amount, right? So who cares where if this should be the 30th guy or the 45th guy? Very few are going to make it. So let's just figure out who we think is, d- despite whatever rankings we have. Right. Mm-hmm. Let me ask a process question real quick. We're kind of going backwards on this, but you know, it is a new structure to the front office. There's people in new roles. Like, what is what is that structure? When you guys come together with prospects, you know, Drew Nicholas said director of scouting. Is that his title? Yeah. Yes. So, like, what role does he play? Like, how is it? Who brings the players in? And then, how do you filter down where you you guys are kind of like narrowing in on? We just kind of yeah, a little bit of everybody, right? Everyone together, really. I mean, everyone you know in our scouting department scouts and goes and sees guys, and uh, and writes reports and comes back and we talk about them. Obviously, Cal's the decision maker, um, but everyone has a great input. You know, Tommy's our assistant GM, Drew Nicholas, Jim Klibanoff. Scott Howard, Rafal Juke has been there forever. Uh, um, is there like a database so like Tommy can look up and say, "Oh, Ben did a report yeah, on Hunter yeah. Tyson." So yeah, everyone like, has access. Kind of yeah, how to every, every single report that goes in, we get an email blast. Okay. Um, so everyone sees everything. Yeah. Basically, everyone sees everything. There's pro reports. There's sometimes just intel reports. Right. Um, oh, I heard from this team that they may do this, and we, everything goes in to kind of track, you know, all these conversations basically. Yeah. Trade mm-hmm. conversation. I mean, every everything. And then we have meetings where we, we highlight certain guys that we want to talk about. And you know? also we end up like watching maybe a little bit of video. Then, you know, at some point, like, hey, yo, you guys should probably go and see that guy a little, you know, a few more times, you know, if you can. Because, you know, it, we've, we've started, maybe some guys started actually getting gaining some momentum. So we need to go and actually have you know, a few more sets of eyes on that player. Gotcha. We, we hired uh, Todd Chekovich this year, who's director of college scouting, which we didn't have before. So he mm-hmm. helps kind of keep things more organized than we had in the past of like who's seen who and who we need to see and making sure we see everyone by the time yeah. uh, we need to. Yeah. Okay. Todd, Todd's been awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, you know, the, the, the new hires this year, I mean, they've been they've been killing it. Um, let's take a break. On the other side, I want to get to the returning players, including Ishmael Kamagate, who is, I know, a chat favorite. So I want to ask about him and what's expected of him, as well as Peyton Watson, Colin Gillespie. Shady Rays, guys, take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays, they've got you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Uh, check out, we're going to be rocking our Shady Rays in Vegas. We got big plans for Vegas for Summer League. We're doing one show at a cabana at the pool we're gonna be rocking our shady rays there um i just got a new pair today me too me too Sh- i've got f- four pairs of shady rays now yeah yeah how many of them for free all of them <laughs> through this partnership <laughs> shadyrays.com use the code dnvr for 50 percent off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades are rated five stars by 200 50,000 people. Again, shadyrays.com. You can also go into their store 
um, Park Meadows Mall if you uh, want to try on your Shady Rays. Uh, but use the code DNVR at ShadyRays.com for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Um, also, sorry to do this, Ben. Bacchus and Shanker. Uh, <laughs> that I don't know if there's if you have any feelings about. I don't know if you have feelings about Bax and Shanker in, in the law game, but um, Bax and Shanker, when you get hurt, they are here to help. They win for Colorado families. They've been helping those who are seriously injured in Colorado. For more than 25 years in Bacchus and Shanker, you don't pay them any money until they win your case. No upfront fees, no fees while they work on your case. And they've won over $1 billion for their clients. Bacchus and Shanker helps with all kinds of injury cases where you weren't at fault. Car accidents, motorcycle, ride share, pedestrian trucks. They can even help you if you're injured at work. Call them today, 303-222-2222 to find out if you have a case for free. Bacchus and Shanker wins. There you go. All right, back here. We got to fly through some of these other guys because we're a little bit behind, and I want to get to free agency as well. But let's just go with Peyton Watson. The thing I was so excited about, Peyton, because Peyton, like, I keep telling people, seeing the defense, I haven't seen much of him on the offense. So I don't have a take. I'm not low. I'm not high on him. I'm just waiting. You know, I want to watch him play. Um, But what I love about him is we interviewed him the other day. This is a small thing, and it can be easily, easily overstated by the media. I thought he gave incredible answers. just mm-hmm. thoughtful. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you could tell yeah, that he's extremely had thoughtful guy. Extremely thoughtful. Like he had thought about things and he thinks about things deeply. And to me, I I know it's a weird thing, but I just appreciated it so much. What else do you see that same thing in him? I'll start with you on this one, Ben. But do you see that same thing in him? Thoughtful. One hundred percent. And then how does that help him as a basketball player? I think he's just he's just really smart. It helps with IQ. He's a he's a bright guy. He's thoughtful. He cares about his teammates. He cares about other people around. He's, he says your name when he says hi. I mean, all little things, but he's a really personable, really great guy. And it's part of why with his you know lack of playing time at UCLA, we're, Cal was obsessed with taking him because we, we felt like as a person he was, he was going to figure it out. Hmm. Well, I think it's the professionalism too. Like 100%. he comes back, second year guy. Like you can kind of feel like this is his team in a, in a sense. Totally. And it feels like he's trying to take ownership of it. He's trying to be a leader out there. And um, that's the sense I got from that inter- interview. Just like, all right, this is a guy who's come back in year two. He's comfortable. And he's just like being professional about everything. He called so Hunter excited. Tyson kid, which yeah. I love. He's <laughs> yeah. like three years older than him. <laughs> he's like, he's a good kid. <laughs> Come on, man. Good kid, little bro. <laughs> 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 uh, no, but what do you want to see from him, and and what what do you think is most important? He maybe the rookies, you know, welcome to the league. He got a sure, long sure. runway. Like Peyton, it does feel to me, at least on the outside, that it's go time. It's like your time now. You know, there's an opportunity for you coming up. So, what do you want to see from him? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, we are very high on him, um, and and next year, you know, very likely is going to have a big role. You know, certainly much bigger role than this year. Um, we just we just believe in his potential. And it, from many perspectives, I mean, you look at him, you know, the way he looks, the way he kind of took that strength program so seriously this year. Um, this really? The entire year. Absolutely did. I yeah. hadn't heard this before. So yeah, it's, yeah, you yeah. Can, he looks stronger. He got so yeah. much got stronger. stronger. I mean, it's, you know, it's credit, you know, credit to Cal to kind of, you know, identifying that. But he basically became super, you know, he, he took that strength schedule so seriously. And Felipe and Klaus, all of our guys in, in, the, in the weight room did an amazing job on him. Um, and, you know, his skill level was always there. Uh, but now that he has the strength and the confidence, I mean, you guys saw it in the last, whatever, was it 10 games or so, right? I mean, when he played yeah. or five games, whatever it was, um, you saw the flash of potential that he can have. And it's absolutely sustainable. Um, and we're very excited about him. And the fact that, again, he's playing summer league. He's taking the ownership of being the, the vet in the room, being the youngest guy. He's still the vet. Um, <laughs> him and Colin, I think, right? I mean, the only two guys who are actually from our team, mm-hmm. I believe. Right. Um, And, you know, I think it's going to be a huge year for him, but I have zero doubt in my mind that he's ready. And I know, you know, his family has been awesome kind of supporting him, you know, the right way. Um, And it's been just an absolute pleasure to have him. I think one thing to add, it it starts with energy to me with him. So as long as he's playing with with energy, it's all going to take care of itself. And he had a bunch of transition baskets yesterday. He was just telling me how his strength is there, so it's easier for him to get out and on offense and on defense. I mean, because it it all starts with him just Mm -hmm. getting deflections, blocks, and just playing hard. Tommy, what do you think he's got to do to be able to play rotation minutes next year? Like, what do you think he's got to check off to to, to be in that spot? I think he already is, uh, honestly. I think he's already there. Um, I think for him probably mostly is going to be 
making sure you consistently make shots. Um, I think his decision making throughout the year has gotten so much better. I mean, you know, he he kind of you know played somewhat uh, an interesting role in the G League where he kind of came in and you know he was basically he was trusted upon to score all the time, right? Right. Um, at this point, I mean, you know, all of a sudden he's rebounding, he's blocking shots, he's you know he's, he's getting steals, you know, he's playmaking for others, which is an extremely underrated uh, part of his game. Mm. Um, he sees the game very very well. Um, you know, I think he's beyond his years in terms of his playmaking. So I think I think he's already there from a skill perspective. Um, if he if he gets a consistent three point shot, um, it's good enough right now. But if it's really consistent and really good, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for him not to play serious serious minutes deep into the postseason. Do you feel him as an offensive player that he? I mean, you're talking about him as like a versatile offensive player. But again, that's the part I haven't. The defense I've seen for sure is right. pops, but the offense like just what is he? What do you what do you compare him to, or what do you think he can become as an offensive player? No, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. that caliber player, that type yeah. of player. Who's who's retired? Let's talk about some retired guys. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, but honestly, like you know, a long playmaking wing, uh, Scotty Pippen type. Honestly, I mean, um, you know, hey, why not him, right? I mean, a guy like that who's big, long, versatile. Scotty played point guard growing up, right? I mean, so all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you know, Peyton. I think he played on the ball quite a bit in high, you know, in, in, in high school as well. Um, that type of guy. That's obviously the absolute highest ceiling because Scotty Pippen is a you know, is a Hall of Famer. Type yeah, that's of pretty good, player, you know. <laughs> But why not but it's just mold. try to do it's the mold. Yeah, that's the mold. Yeah, that's the mold of guy. And, and I think he can he can get pretty damn pretty darn close to it. Yeah. yeah. I always love I yeah, always, yeah. I always <laughs> love when people are when you give a comp, because it's always a stylistic comp to say a guy is going to be as good of a Hall of Famer. It's like, come on, man, if I have to find a style comp and a quality comp both, it's like you'll never find that. You know, you just say he's in the mold of a Scotty Pippen or or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um Let's go to Ishmael Kamagate. You know, first of all, like, what's the story with him? Because I know he just signed a new deal with a with a team. Is it in Milan? Yeah, yeah, yeah with Milan. Olympia, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what is the deal with him? And you know, how does it change the plans now? Him having signed this deal. Yeah, uh, he's. I mean, he's. He's a you know who's he's a guy who we really like. Obviously, you know, we drafted him. You know, in second round last year. Um, he has great potential to be a modern NBA big. Uh, you know. Great finisher at the rim. I think he ended up like his field goal percentage. I'm not, you know, I, I don't, I haven't checked lately because I, you know, I don't know if I checked uh, most recently, but it's about like 70% or something like that. I mean, he just finishes everything at the rim. Um, he still needs to get just a little more real playing time, you know, under his belt. And that probably means EuroLeague type of, type of level. Um, you know, we essentially want him to really become. To a point where we can actually bring him over and have him, you know, back up Nikola. It's a tall task, and we understand that. Uh, but you know, that's why him playing in, in Euroleague, playing for a great coach in Atori Messina, uh, Milano is you know such a high-level team. He's gonna go there. He's going to get. Um, that's gonna be Atori Messina University immediately, mm. right? Uh, we don't know how long he's gonna he's gonna be there. I mean, all of that is is up in the air. But the fact that he has the tools to do it, um, he has the mentality. He clearly has the body and the skill set, um, you know, to have somebody like that kind of matriculating and, you know, becoming a player overseas. I mean, that's a, that's an exciting thought for us. So we're just monitoring his development. And hopefully when the time comes, you know, he's going to be he's going to come in and hit the ground running. Yeah, uh, I, I guess what you're saying, though, he can develop better over there playing real minutes, real playing time against really good competition, better than he could, you know, develop here. in a Sure. Way. And, you know, the two way rules, obviously, you know, um, the two way rules, I mean, we can't pay the buyout for him to be a two-way i mean that's an nba rule so i mean it's it's we kind of have to make sure that we we do everything you know in a in a legal way mm -hmm. um so he's gonna be there he's gonna he's gonna perform and i think you know you kind of nailed it on the head as well i mean him playing euro league basketball and g league basketball is, is a fantastic level and we can actually you know have our own say in how we you know how he does things uh but at the same time if you're playing euro league basketball which would be the second best level in the world yeah that's that's something and him you know really playing for for, for an amazing coach over there uh with you know real guys who are you know ex nba players as well i think it's going to be perfect for him is it possible because it's a two-year deal does is it like should we expect a two years over there or is it you know we reevaluate as it goes i think anything's possible yeah it's, i no. think really like you could reevaluate it anytime okay. Let's get to Colin. Um, another guy like Peyton that I have to give a shout out because interviewing him the other day, I just, again, found him to be so thoughtful and reflective because we hadn't really talked to him for a mm -hmm. year. And he walked us through all the different process and things he learned. And it was another one of those guys where I walked away from it going, 
that's a guy that really thinks about how all this connects together and everything. And so I was impressed with him. Um, and then also, I just love his game. So how do you break down his day, his game, Tinzer? He's super tough. He's just a winner at every level. Uh, he's he's a leader. He's a champion. He uh, he communicates great out there. He's super crafty with the ball. He's a great shooter. Um, tough defender. He's like the perfect team guy. Is he a bro? He's a bro. <laughs> he seems like a bro. <laughs> Definitely a bro. <laughs> Love that guy. He's, he's such a bro. So, you know, you can talk to him about anything, and he's you know just like a cool dude to be around. Yeah, you know? yeah. He really is. Yeah. Uh, and I love watching him and Pickett go at each other, sure. you know, like because they Super both are really crafty, yeah. you know, so it's like a craft off. Craft off. <laughs> craft off between two bros. <laughs> yeah, it's craft off. Yeah. Just guys being dudes, man. Just, 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 just dudes being dudes, yeah. They're both man. so competitive. It's, it's fun to see them. Yeah, I mean, that. you guys are going to have good point guard play in uh, Vegas, which I mean, is, yeah. isn't is something that's always a thing. <laughs> well, it's also the most important thing, I feel, yeah. for Summer League. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's just, like six point guards Just like you, League. right? Like you in general. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's Colin, it's Jalen. I mean, it's it's Baden and all these dudes, I mean, with such high IQs. It's, and we have, you know, a bunch of other guys who, you know, we can Man, you know, as part of our team, I mean, those guys really know how to play as well. So, like you, I mean, that's something we place a lot of value on. And I mean, we want our summer league team to somewhat mirror, you know, what we're trying to do with the main team. So, that's who's, what we are. who's one guy under the radar that well, that, I, that we should watch? Huh? Uh, Not so. We just went through the guys, the roster guys. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, under under the radar guy. And under we, the radar. Uh, Man, Armand, here you're Armand asking Franklin. him to like Armand pick Franklin one guy, and then everybody else thinks maybe this or that. Let me go through the list here. Armand Franklin. Yeah, just give me the quick rundown on these guys. These are the others on the summer league roster. Sure, sure, sure. Shot maker, good defender, multi position player. Shot like, makers and catch and shoot shooter, or like he just hit a spinning turnaround jumper. He can do that. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't All. say the craziest off the dribble, but he's got some game off the dribble too. Okay, Andrew Funk. Ah, oh, crazy shooter. Elite. Yeah, elite shooter. I mean, flies around all the time, you know, making that floor as, as, as wide as you can possibly make it. And him and Jalen obviously have a great connection because they played together. They, I put that on the Seattle report, but they have little pet actions that they run. They ran together a lot. So mm-hmm. you can just tell that was like a... I'm, yeah. I'm I sure. Think that, I think that like, was his favorite target. Every guard has a favorite target. I think it was yeah. him because he knew he would shoot it. Probably half, sure. of assist, well, yeah. half of his assists. Well, half of his assists probably came, you know, came to Andrew. And the other ones, you know, was, were uh, you know, Seth Lundy as well. So, I mean, he probably he loves mm-hmm. those shooters, man. Funk yeah. looks like Harrison, too, which I love. Just like, you would, just like you wouldn't look at Harrison and be like, that guy's an NBA <laughs> Summer League player. Wow. Well, just, I guess I'll take it. That's, that as, is a as compliment soon, As soon as Funk, you know, he steps on the floor, you're like, oh, my God. God. Yeah, that makes a lot That's of shots. Harrison Wind. Uh, That's Harrison Wind. <laughs> I love that Grant Golden's name is Golden, <laughs> and he plays for the gold. Yes. It's actually the coolest thing. It is. And he's, it's actually from Golden, Colorado. Is, no, he's not. Almost got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but Baby Jokic. Am I am I going too far here? That's it. That's it. That's basically five it. assists at Grand Rapids. You can't call Jalen yeah. Pickett and Grant Golden <laughs> baby Jokic. We, we have a you lot can't of do that. Jokic has a lot of babies. If I have, if I have to pick, I'm picking Pickett. Gosh dang it! <laughs> <laughs> You're picking. That pick. was really hard to say. <laughs> that, that was. That's fantastic. Um, no, no, but but yeah, unbelievable basketball IQ. Great offensive player. You know, has has you know has great touch. Um, just, does you know, he have a little yoke? He has, touch a, has a little yoke touch. Really? A little yoke touch. He absolutely does. He had a does. couple nice floaters today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, we 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 actually you know ran a lot of our offense through him. Did he know, get a triple double last year? He, he got did. one triple double. Yeah. Yeah. One triple double. Yeah, I mean, last the passing is crazy. Yeah, he's yeah. a mini yoke. Is there? I mean, <laughs> is there value in that? You got a team. You're controlling a team. Like we need to get these guys up to speed to play in with yoke. One hundred percent. Sure thing. Uh, it yeah. actually helps. What so. a great career! Even you could just carve yourself out as the practice you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like joke. yeah, it's like the backup quarterback. Yeah, yeah. The best job in the world. Yeah, he's, best, a, he's uh, a very good player. I mean, he's he's his own guy. But Nikola is his favorite player. I, I love yeah, that. Yeah, he really yeah. is. Yeah. Does Jokic know that? He'd I don't probably know. Hate that. I don't know. <laughs> probably, <laughs> I think he, he probably deep inside is like that's kind of maybe nice. he told him last year at camp. You <laughs> might. Yeah, might You're my favorite player. Can I get a picture? He's like, dude, we're teammates. Nah, Stop. Grant, Grant, Grant's too cool. Grant's cool, man. I love that. Uh, Amir Sims. Uh, it's funny, man. So you know, I, I went to oh, I went overseas in December and uh, just to see Ishmael and Amir played on Ishmael's team in Paris, um, and you know they played uh, the number one pick this year, you know Victor and uh, Amir just kind of Amir took it to him. Ishmael uh, as a no, guard. Ishmael. Well, he's not a guard. No, he's I mean, like Amir is he's like six, six eight. Oh, four, yeah, four, six, eight, four. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, he he essentially he held him to eleven and five. Uh, I think it was the worst game that, that Victor had the entire year. Um, and I mean, Amir is just like you know, he's a pro's pro. 
You guys obviously remember Darrell Arthur. We're kind of joking around. He's basically, you know, oh, this is him. He's a baby yeah. DA. We're talking Dude, about a lot of babies a, here. Man, you're you're you say that he looks exactly like him. That's why mm-hmm. he says. That's why mm-hmm. the comp. But it's, it's, Our, it's every the game. comp is a visual comp. It's, it's yeah. the game. Kenneth no, 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 Montrezl Harrell no, no, no. was no, no, Kenneth no. Reed. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, no, no. It's 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 the game. I promise. It's, it's the game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Big, strong, really smart. I mean, DA was you know such a good NBA player. I mean, he's just strong. Vocal, right? I mean, can guard one through five, can make shots. Amir does the same thing. Um, he's just, he's, you know, he's a, he's a very, very intriguing, you know, young player. Um, he can have a, you know, a long career, whether it's the NBA or somewhere else. But I mean, like, he's an interesting to watch for sure. And he was also teammates with Hunter Tyson. He was at Clemson. At Clemson. Yeah, I like yeah, those yeah. little connections a lot everywhere. Of them, yeah, a lot of them. Um, Mark Smith. Yeah, yeah, played, you know, played great in Germany last year. So he started at Illinois, played three years at Missouri. And then uh, last year played, you know, in uh, at Kansas State. Yeah, then, so three different schools. Three different schools, yeah, in five years. And then, you know, and then he played in Germany last year, had a fantastic year. You can probably say he was maybe the best, if not one of, you know, I mean, top three, if not the best rookie, American rookie overseas. Uh, ended up averaging like 16.7 rebounds, three assists. I mean, shot, I want to say 38 from three on a lot of attempts. I mean, it's just like a really aggressive um, scorer that has unlimited range. Um, really fun guy to, to have in the gym. A taller Marcus Howard. That's my comp. That's your That's comp? my comp, at least. It's a solid comp. It's a good they one. have the same body. For yeah. sure. Yeah. It's a solid comp, yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. Both him and Amir, are, you, know, have, you know, they had that one year overseas, and they've been, they've been awesome in the gym. One more guy that I comp to Yoke, baby Yoke, if you will. <laughs> Cassius Stanley. <laughs> Wait, what? That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a 45-inch vertical. <laughs> yeah. He actually played well today. I was actually impressed with Stanley. He's not baby Jokic, but Cassius Stanley. Then. Sharp shooter, super athletic, great energy, great defender, just plays hard. He stands out because I saw him just grab a rebound the other day, and I didn't know because I don't know he's good by face, and when he he jumped this high and grabbed it, and I was like, he floats. I was man. like, that looks Cassius so Stanley for it. sure. Yeah. He, he just floats. He just floats in the air. I mean, even like... The very first day, we're all in the gym and we're doing a three-man weave. He just casually just like floats in the air and dunks it. I'm like, we're not even like we're not even doing we're not it. Even two, <laughs> two minutes into practice yet, man. How, how are you doing this? I mean, it's incredible. And then, the, ta- oh, go ahead. So I just to say the level of competitiveness stands out. It's so obvious. Oh, at the gym. Yeah, it's awesome. There's no yeah. like guys that kind of got the grace invite. Everyone's, like, all yeah. right. Everyone's just competing and yeah. playing super hard. Ta- was Taz Sherman though? I don't think I've seen him. Yeah, played at you know JUCO first, first two years, and then played at uh, West Virginia the last three years. Um, okay. You know, really nice scorer. You know, he's you know. Pretty good size, pretty good body. Yeah, I mean he's uh, he's been sick in the last couple of you know, well just today. Uh, but you know he's uh, he's a, he's a great scorer as well. So I'm happy to have him. Let's go through free agency here um, and just kind of talk about you know Reggie Jackson came over as a as a uh, buyout guy and now he's signed a two year deal here. Ooh. Not yet. <laughs> oh, it's really? the moratorium. Yeah. Not on the moratorium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like he might. Sorry. You know, it sounds like he might yeah, do it. No. I don't know. It's possible. Who knows if what's going to happen? If he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. If he what ends else? up. Uh, yeah, we haven't Let's say if he ends up signing, you know, say a two year deal. I don't know. Like, <laughs> sorry. A player option there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we do that. Just sorry. No, but it. in theory, yeah. no, it's okay. But Reggie Jackson, though, just what did you guys see from him? And what, because we didn't see him a whole lot, right? There was a little couple games he played, and then he played spot minutes here or there in the playoffs. But what is it that that you see behind that maybe we don't see and and what does he bring to the team or what would he bring to the team i mean yeah, you know he's uh well first of all obviously you know it's well advertised that he's from the area right, right. it's not really that he's from the area but he's he spent you know a good amount of time of his life here um you know he was we thought he was fantastic in the locker room with the young guys i mean really really great great dude how so though what does that mean just you know just positive energy constantly and you know, even if he didn't get to play as much as he wanted to i mean he always kind of brought it on you know all the workouts the practices you know played with the young guys you know those three and three four and four all the time just uh, saying hi to everyone yeah. polite you know just being a, a nice mm-hmm. guy to have around. just just you know just a fantastic veteran right i mean it, it it is so important to have those guys i mean it's not always it's not always you should have all 15 guys that can play it's not and, and I'm not saying that he, he, he can't, obviously, but it's sometimes, you know, when you have a veteran who may not get on the court as, as often as they want to, it's amazing to have that positive energy just emanating from them, right? Uh, because that kind of lifts up the entire locker room. Um, and he's definitely one of those guys. But here's the thing. I mean, he, he also can absolutely play still. I mean, it's, we're not talking about somebody who's, you know, 39, 40 years old, just kind of, you know, just there as a team dad. That's not really the case. I mean, the, the, you know, the dude is a really good player. Um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. What... Um was that something you knew, Ben, that he was going to be this way? Like, is that his reputation? 
I don't know his reputation yeah. behind closed so doors. So my, Mike Pemberthy, our shooting coach, uh, spent some time with him before, and so we, we we heard a lot about him before that he was just a wonderful guy to have around. Where did he spend time with him in, in, L- in LA? A, with yeah, Clippers? in the summers he would. Oh, he, working yeah, out just in the summers, like off season, he would shoot with them and stuff. Okay, awesome. And then DeAndre Jordan is kind of the same thing. I mean, we laughed. Maybe you guys, I know, look, you guys don't check social media, but maybe you see it from time to time. Last year, first signing, DeAndre Jordan. Uh, we, we, Get rid we of this guy. It. Cal's out, man. He lasted like one <laughs> week before yeah, we heard it. the <laughs> fan base was ready to we fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. This year, he's also the first signing, and people are like, hell yeah, he's coming back. <laughs> I mean, that, that's right. It's all context, right, at the right. end of the day. Um, and it kind of comes back to you know, what we were saying, essentially, you know, even if DJ didn't play as much last year, I mean, he was, I mean, he was, he was an amazing veteran, wasn't he? 100%. He was just awesome. Getting, just getting everybody together, you know, always keeping, you know, the, the vibes really high. I know, you know, DNVR podcast is, is very, you know, vibes. Very, 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 very vibes. important yeah. trick. You're vibe very centric. vibe centric. DJ was, you know, was, was, was the vibes man, um, you know, in the locker room all the time. So, I mean, guys like that really make a huge difference. Um, is there any fear that he was part of a leadership duo, him and Jeff. It just felt like they were a buddy comedy, you know, like the two guys together. And Ish, too. Yeah. So yeah. He was part yeah. of that group. Yeah. I mean, it's valid. Yeah. You know, I mean, not to get too much into the, the other stuff, but, yeah, I mean, it, they were great together, Ish, too, and, and it did feel like they collectively were, were the leaders. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you obviously want to re- replace that. Uh, but but we'll be fine. We feel good about it. What yeah. about Justin Holiday? Similar things. You know, he's been in the league for a, for a while. Not if he a, were not official, yeah, hold on. Either, if, if, yeah, yeah, no, who, you're right, you're right. you didn't get yeah, the memo yeah. that these aren't yeah, official yeah, yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're right. I don't even know what we're talking about. This. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Here, here's my question about free agency and the bench <laughs> that I've been waiting to ask. Go for it. Um, Lots of social media guys. <laughs> how how comfortable are you guys relying on your youth more next year, Christian? Peyton, sure. you talked question. about Peyton yeah. going into a bigger role. Great question, um, Harrison Wynn. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, <laughs> assistant GM of the Nuggets, telling all about this. Um, how, how just comfortable do you guys feel relying on those guys for a bigger role and, and your youth in general? I think very comfortable, honestly. I really, I really do. I mean, you know, we, you know, it, there were questions, I should say, probably last year when when Christian and Peyton came on, um, and we, you know, they're like, "Are these guys gonna play?" And all of a sudden, not even midway through the season, I think it was game two of the year when Christian played against Golden State, we're like, yeah. "Okay, you know, I think you know the league right now. I think with the CBA rules and everything, you're almost going to have to go to to that type of model. Maybe not everybody will, right? I mean, it's it's never it's never one size fits all." But uh, you'll have to extract a lot of value from your young players, no matter what. Whether it's going to be minimum deals or just young players on rookie deals or you know or, or second round exception deals, um, you know you'll have to be a much better scout to make sure the guys that you bring in not only can they play next year, but that they fit your team and they fit your ethos. Um, and I think you know what we're trying to do early on is to you know get into that model, right? I mean we'll have our starting starting unit you know fully back obviously you know those guys are that's 80 percent of your playoff production sure. of playoff minutes um you have to make sure that you know the, the the young guys who come in uh that they're that they're able to hang and they're able to perform and impact the game and i think you know from what we saw last year with with christian and maybe a little bit with Peyton as well uh we feel very comfortable that the guys that we brought in will be able to kind of take that baton and kind of run with it mm-hmm. yeah it seems to there's young and then there's like immature. I feel like there's young players, but there's not immature players. You know what I mean? And I don't even mean that as a knock. Most guys that are 20 years old are immature. <laughs> but it just seems like we talked about a lot of these guys as being like older souls. You know, even Peyton Watson being this like mature soul to him. It's a great point. So. I mean, that's why we weren't afraid of taking older guys in the draft because we felt like that was going to help right. with the transition of having these guys for a few more years and them kind of coming into their own and, and being really valuable with the mm-hmm. new, like he mentioned the new rules. It's, it's just, you're just limited to what you can spend at a certain point. Right. So you have to f- figure out, you know, if you have high salary players, you have to figure out how to fill it out on the back end with mm-hmm. lower value guys. Salary wise. Yeah. The, uh, well, I love it guys. I'm excited for it. Give us before we get out of here now, I'll get you out on this. Give us a really hot take for summer league and t- come on, man, you're on the chair. You don't have to be too <laughs> held to it, but give us something Step outside of your pragmatic self oh, for man. a second and just give us a wild one. Like on about us? 
About you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, about our, our team. Our team. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. going to give me your personal <laughs> bet. Yeah, yeah, really good. Ben 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 table. Yeah, Ben Ben's going to shut down Hakkasan. <laughs> yeah. we'll see. I'm telling you. That's the hottest thing. It's not going to be that, that hot of a take. It's uh, actually going to happen. It's just going to happen. <laughs> no, it might have happened already. I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, Andrew Funk will, will like, get catch fire one game and, and go nuts on threes. Nice. Go, I like that's it. That's a great one. Who, who has less of a conscious on taking shots, Funk or Strother? Because I feel like both of them have that thing where it's like, oh, tiny window, I'm open. Take uh, it. Yeah, it's just like fire meets fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot more fire, I guess. I don't know. No, it, it, that's a good question. I guess we'll see in Vegas, you know, what happens yeah. between the two. But I feel like we're going to be flying around, and those dudes are going to be taking a lot of shots. Funk is such a good name, too, man. People are going to remember <laughs> Funky, you know. Uh, funk it, man. It helps you out if you yeah. have a great, great name. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, he gave a, he, a pretty it's good fun, one. No, this is great. That's great. Um... You can go hotter though. My, I'd say, hold on, my Kale. Hot, oh my god! I'll say two peppers. Hot take. Two, two, two pepper take. <laughs> my hot take. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> two peppers. That's pretty yeah. solid. That's pretty solid. My hot take is. Uh, great shooters gonna make threes. Peyton, Wa- Peyton Watson. <laughs> Peyton Watson is gonna. Get he's spicy. Going to, he's gonna have. Come on. He's gonna have like a six block game. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Six blocks. He's gonna go crazy like one, one time. All right, yeah, I like it. Just, Kale says four peppers. So I think go. that's pretty I'll, good. I'll We're take good. the four peppers. I can't eat spicy food though, but that's I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat spicy food. Do you want to just show him how it's done? Give him a five pepper take. All right. <laughs> my uh, my five pepper take. I'll take Julian Strother to hit. Six threes in one game. Six threes in one game. Kale? That has to be one pepper. That's one pepper, Kale. Is that five There's no chance. Five There's no chance. It's a shorter, it's it's a shorter it's, game. It's, it's, it's almost expected that he's going to do that. Six threes? Yeah. Jimmy Fredette did that every game. If you had said like 11 like, threes, I'd be like, okay, all right, that's kind of hot. Here we go. Four. <laughs> you brought it down a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, oh, man, this is a tough one. I'll give Jalen Pickett a triple double. We'll get it. We'll get my okay, guy Pick a okay. triple double. I like man. it. That's okay. not. That's how you do it. It's a triple that's double. A fun one. Triple that's double. a good one. You play twenty three minutes, you get a triple double. That's and a good one. You might break Jokic's record. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest triple double. Uh, all right, hit that outro that's music, tough. Kale. Guys, thanks so much for hanging with us. Do we have any super chats for them? Nope. Oh, all right. First time ever. <laughs> oh, shame on no you, super chats. Yeah. Uh, guys, okay. thanks so much for coming down thanks, and just guys. doing thanks this. Thanks for having us, fellas. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, and you know, good luck at the summer league. If they're bad, you'll have to come back on an answer for it. Yeah, we'll see you out there. You guys will be there, right? We'll see you guys out there. We'll be there. My favorite week. Expectations are um, a championship. Sure. Right. Right. Man, back, you know back what? to rings, just rings. No, don't you see that we the twenty seventh odds of winning uh, uh, summer league? Which again, <laughs> it's dumb. To care how much stock are you putting just, in those odds? No, I'm just wondering how they decided that. How did they look at it and say? Uh, I'm guessing the Spurs odds. are pretty high up. You know, you know. Yeah, but, is it, but yeah. are they playing their guy? All the way through to the finals in the summer league? No, no but he'll. So it should be everybody has even odds to they win. Saw a lot of, they be. saw a lot of R's from yeah, rookies, yeah. and they're like, all right, these guys. These you know, guys. These yeah. guys. Yeah. But they, they, they little did they know. Little a, bunch did of, they know. a bunch of mature <laughs> guys wait. out there in the gym. I'm saying. <laughs> mature guys. Everybody, thanks for hanging with us. Hey, our <laughs> vlog, the spotlight of the finals is coming up. You're not going to want to miss it, man. RG put his heart and soul into it. And like I said, man, my favorite chapter, game five. All those goosebumps, they come roaring back. Hit the like button. We'll see you on the other side.